Hey there. Today I want to talk about mental health and it's something that I feel should be talked about more. Uh, there's, you know, a huge stigma about mental health and I want to help normalize it, to be honest. So I am going to talk about a story in my life that caused me pain emotionally and yeah okay so here we go <laughs> I was in foster care and to be honest a lot of my friends don't know that and honestly probably some of my family doesn't either so yeah um but I want to talk about it because it is a story that is real and I don't want to be ashamed of my story. So I remember I was about nine years old because my sister was, I want to say about four, I think. She was three or four. So I was like eight or nine maybe close to 10, something like that. I don't know. Time is weird. <laughs> but I remember I was living in North Delta, British Columbia, and we lived in a townhouse. It was my sister, myself, and my mom. And it was a normal day. I was upstairs and I heard a knock at the door. And it was like a loud, and I was like, bang, bang, bang. And next thing I know, I hear my mom yelling. And I was like, what is going on? And then I heard someone coming up the stairs, and it was actually two people. It was a, a man and a woman. And they came upstairs, they looked at me, and they said, you need to come with us. And I said, what do you mean? Who are you? <laughs> and they said... We are social workers and you need to come with us right now. It's for your safety. And I was very confused. I was, I was, I was like, what's like, what's wrong with my mom? And they never answered that question. They picked up my sister and they said, we have to go. And I remember my mom started, my mom was crying and She just looks so hurt. And sorry. I remember they put us in the back of a car. We didn't know who these people were. Um, they had a car seat for my sister. And they started to drive away from my house. <laughs> And I just, I remember I kept asking, where are you taking me? Where are you, like, what is happening? And then the woman finally said, we're taking you to a place where you'll be safe. And I was like, I'm, just, like, I'm confused. And she said that it wasn't safe for my sister and I to be with my mom anymore. And as a nine year old who had helped take care of my mom for the last few years, like I was worried, I was worried that something was gonna happen while my mom was home alone. Like if she'd start a fire in the kitchen or because she don't know what happens sometimes or, you know, she'd fall going down the stairs or something. I was so worried. And I said, well, is Sherry, my sister, is she going to be like with me? And they said, yeah, you guys are going to go together to a house. So they took us to a house and... I remember there was other children there. I believe they had, I want to say, two, 
two foster children and I think maybe one of their own kids. It was something like that. There was, there was other kids. I know they had at least one of their own. We had been there for about a month. My sister was having a bath and uh, I told the foster mom that I would dry her for her. And she's like, okay, great. And so I get Sherry out of the bath and I'm drying her off with a towel. And I saw some bruises on her. And I was like, Sherry, where, what happened to you? Like, where, where did you get these bruises? They were like on her legs and, and she didn't want to tell me. And I said, you can tell me, like, where did you, where did you get these bruises? And I was trying to be all, you know, sort of lighthearted about it because I didn't want to scare her. I wanted her to be, I, I wanted her to be fine, right? I just wanted to know. And she said, mommy did it. And I'm like, mommy, what do you, what do you mean? And she was talking about the foster mom because she had called the, the new mom, mommy. And so I said the woman's name. I can't remember what the woman's name was, but I remember, are you talking about her? And she, Sherry said, yeah. And I was like, okay, okay. So I finished drying her off and I put her pajamas on. I think she went to bed or something. And then I asked the foster mom and I said, can I please call my mom to say goodnight? And she said, yeah, sure, whatever. So I remember going over to the phone and I didn't call my mom. I called a social worker, like my social worker. And I said that my sister has bruises all over her and it's from the foster mom and I don't feel safe here and I want to go and I, I want to get out of here within like half an hour or something. A few social workers showed up and took all of us foster kids out of the house. I'm pretty sure they left the people's own kid there, but I remember specifically all of us foster children were removed from, removed from the house. And then I was given the choice. I was asked if I wanted to go to a new foster home or if I wanted to go back home to my mom because I had shown maturity and they were going to allow me to have have the choice. And I asked about Sherry. And they said Sherry was for sure going to have to go back into a foster home. And that wasn't negotiable. My mom couldn't take care of Sherry. And so I thought about it for a quick second there. And I said, I need to go home because my mom needs me. I was so worried that she was going to burn the house down or fall off her scooter somewhere or something was going to happen to her and I just felt that I needed to be there so that was the day that my sister and I got separated <sighs> I'm gonna have to watch this now right away <laughs> So I, I ended up going home to be with my mom and I was able to, to stay there um, for probably another year because I was 11, I want to say, when living with my mom had become too much for me and I couldn't. I couldn't handle the responsibility anymore and that's when I called my dad and my dad was living in Vancouver with my first stepmom and I asked him and I said can I please come and live with you because I'm either going to come and live with you or I'm going to go and live under a tree but I can't be here anymore and it took him about a week 
to to decide and then he told me that I could come live there but they didn't have a room for me I'd have to just live on the couch in the living room and I said that was fine so that's what I did I moved to Vancouver and I lived on a couch for two years and I uh, my sister did stay in foster care until she was 18 and yeah, I, to this day, I can remember a lot of the, a lot of that situation very vividly and it really messed with my mind. Um, and sometimes when I'm having, you know, a low day or whatever, sometimes, you know, a memory like that will pop in my head and like it'll try and grab onto other negative things and then it's so easy to spiral and I am choosing to not allow the spiral and I want to apologize for not posting a video for the last week I think it was uh, I had an issue at a store locally where I was made to feel unworthy to be there, whether they didn't like my size, the fact that I was plus size, or maybe they didn't like the fact that maybe they thought I didn't have the money to shop there, which I do, <laughs> to be completely fair. I had all of the money. I could have, I could have spent a lot of money there if I wanted to, but they made me feel inferior and that I shouldn't have been there because they wouldn't even make eye contact with me. Um, but sometimes you have these things, these things happen and then other thoughts come back and then, you know, you think about something else and it can just go like this and you want to go, ah! <laughs> but I don't live in the past and I can't predict the predict the future and I want to live now and I want to let people know that no matter what your story is you deserve to be heard and if you have a story that you want to share with me go ahead and comment below or email me or find me on social media I have I'll link all of my things down below in the description and I just want to spread some light and it is hard to do when the world is so dark, but I am here and I'm ready to shine, tears and all, and I just want to thank you. Thank you for watching this video. I know that I will get out of this funk and I will get back onto my regular posting schedule. <laughs> and uh, with that said, please go ahead, click subscribe. I would love to have you uh, be one of my subscribers and like this video if you liked it or give it a thumbs down if you didn't. <laughs> totally fine with me. Um, and take care of yourself. Take care of the people that you care about and let's lift each other up. Okay, bye.